This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show. I've said it before. Favorite time of my week. We're back. Sebastian Maniscalco on the other end. DJ Hank behind the glass. What's up, bro? How are you? What are we doing? We got a lot to get into. I say the same shit every week. I know. I know. Listen, let's comment on uh, your your appearance right now. My appearance? You look like you're ready to take a, a novel by a fireplace with some scotch and, uh, and just read <laughs> the sweater. If you could stand up a little bit yeah. uh, just to show the audience, look at this sweater. It's uh, it's a reading sweater. Yeah, 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 I love this sweater. It goes both ways. Some people come up and say, it's, you know, I love it, and other people hit me with comments like that. It's funny you say that, though, because before the show, like you said, this is all new to us. I literally was, like, thinking about what I'm going to wear. I took my time. I wanted to go like this to let the chain show. Yeah, no, but no, let the, it open. Let it breathe. But, but, bro, don't you find the button situation is, like, there's one button always in a shirt where if you button it, I'm like, what am I, a priest? It's practically up to my uh, Adam's apple. And then you unbutton that, and you're like, <laughs> what am I, Danny Terrio? And there's like an in-between button that's missing to me, man. Yeah, there should be an alternate button if you want to, you know, meet halfway, you I, know? Yes, yes. But, I think um, it would be a nice option on a shirt, and I haven't seen a button that's kind of hidden that maybe you, you know, you, you let it you let it in when, uh, when you want to go halfway. So... I think that's a good <laughs> have you ever been have you ever been out and uh halfway through the night you look in the mirror in the bathroom and sudden and you're like it's time to go one more button out on this night listen i i've done that where i've been out and it's a good night and you're like you know what let's 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 make this breathe a little bit maybe yeah. maybe if if i bent down to get something maybe a nipple shows uh, hey. <laughs> well that's a that's a heavy unbutton you got if a nip's popping out but like i've walked into an establishment especially you know on a saturday night and i'm buttoned a little high and you walk in you look around you get the vibe at a place that it's a little more hip and you're like yeah we gotta go to that button one more down right there right down there baby and then there's chest hair. I forgot where, where you landed. Do you have chest hair? Yeah. Oh. Man, yeah. you said that high pitch. Like, do you have a little? Or you... No, I mean, I, I have chest hair. Currently, I have chest hair. Can your wife lose her fingers in your hair? No. Ah, that's not, that's no, right. it's, you... uh, it's manicured. What do you mean? It's trimmed. What? You trim your chest hair? Yeah. In all these years, I didn't know that. You trim your chest? You. I told you that. Not your chest hair. Yeah. What do you mean? Like it's clipped. Who clips it? You? Me? On the I, road? <laughs> <laughs> I specifically do it on the road. Well, we talk about process. I, I bring a clipper. Yeah. Right? Uh huh. And then I, uh, I didn't tell you this. I, I don't know, <laughs> man. Hank, have you heard this? Probably not. You didn't say the first three shows on iHeart. <laughs> <laughs> so I lay it down, the yeah. towel. And what I do you mean, you lay what down? A, a towel, a hotel room oh, okay. towel. All right. And I don't do this in the nice hotels that I stay at. I wait till I'm going to stay at a hotel that's not so nice. So was that like a Four Seasons for you? <laughs> <laughs> Your not nice hotel is my is my uh, family vacation guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I tell you why I do it at a, at a hotel that I'm not really uh, too fond of because yeah. the process is I do a full. I'd say I do a full clipping. Of the chest hair, and uh, you know the uh, the under uh, carriage. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all right, under carriage. That seems to be the younger youths do that too, and that's a very popular yeah, I, thing. I, but, I clean it up. Yeah, but the chest up, hair but... is this is new ground to me. So you stand you stand over the towel, stand over the towel, and, and you I put the full... clipper on what level? What the uh, street level? With, no, I, no, I no, no, no muffler. No muffler. Just what, bro? That's practically skin. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it tight, and then 
what I do is I let it grow. And when he starts to grow out, then it's a beautiful manicure. It's almost like Bermuda grass, bro. Wow. Right? So get the f- So as it's coming in, there's a certain amount of time where as it's coming in, where it, it peaks, where it looks. Yeah. 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 You, you don't want to show like I don't I don't do a full clipping. Yeah. During the summer months, say, where a shirt could come off either on a vacation or at a pool. Uh huh. I'll do a full clipping in, let's say, May. Yeah. And by June fifteenth, it's in full bloom. So we're right? talking about, it's like a vineyard. <laughs> about a four about a four week grow time for your average chest, you say? I'd say a good six weeks until it's ready to to be shown to the public. <laughs> so wait, but have why not just have you ever thought like let's say in two weeks all of a sudden you're like, hey, you're gonna be invited to something where you know you're gonna be shirtless and you and you don't have time for the whole four four week program. Have you ever thought about slapping a muffler on the buzzer and not going all the way down and just, uh, you know, it's like doing your beard. I don't have to go all the way to skin. I can go at a. Yeah, I I haven't got that uh, confident with the muffler yet where I could trim it. Something about just for me, it's more psychological. You're just just cleaning away all the the, the the hair over the course of it. It's almost like a cleansing for yeah, me. Yeah, but don't you feel like, and not to get religious because we're not, but God made you, you're a man. You're supposed to have that shit, man. He's looking down and going, what the fuck? It's like a cat declawing itself. What are you doing, man? <laughs> That's what separates you. That's what makes you a man, man. I'm He's- telling you, when, when you start getting that nice six-week growth in, yeah. it it's beautiful because... After a while, the hairs begin to get so long they got a they got a, a mind of their own. I mean, you ever look at your nipple hair and go, "Eh, where's this hair going?" Oh, I've taken my two fingers and I lick them together, and then I twist my nipple hair, and it could come all the way out to here. And I I want to cut it. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I can braid this shit, but then I just rub it out. And and walk away, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So see, instead of doing that, I take it down. You do it, and, and then I just let it grow back. And this is this is kind of where it gets a little strange. All right. So <laughs> now I got a towel of hair, right? Yeah, yeah. And I can't leave it in the hotel room because when the maid comes in and snaps out the towel, she's going to get rained on yeah, with yeah. chest hair and ball hair, right? Yeah. yeah. And and again, you're a classy guy. If if you're doing this, what are these animals doing in the other rooms? That's what I'm saying. See, I know. <laughs> so I've taken the towel yeah. out of the room. Oh, I do that all the time. But with the hair in it. Yeah. And then I disposed of it on site at the venue. Oh, you take it off property. On property. From- <laughs> that is dedication to the cause, man. Why all you gotta do is shake it out in the parking lot, really. I'm not I'm not I'm not shaking out a towel of hair and snapping it in the in the uh, in the parking lot. But I who's just, to say the venue doesn't think that you shaved your chest hair in the green room? What are you, they, what are you doing they, with the towel? I, at the I put it I put it in a in a in a in a in a, <laughs> in a garbage can. It could be any it could be the lighting guy. <laughs> so you bust my balls about shit, but you're walking out to go to a gig uh, with a towel filled with your chest hair, but you don't want to leave it in the hotel. But yeah. then why does it, oh, that's why you do in dumpy hotels, because you do in a real nice hotel where those towels are expensive. Then those, yeah, and then yeah. it's like, I don't want to have like the hair, because here's another thing. Let me, let me throw this one at you. This yeah. is how far my brain goes, and this is the Sicilian in me. I'm often really worried about doing any type of cutting hair in, in, in hotel rooms because let's say the next person that checks in murders his family, right? And they start doing a forensic analysis of the room. Yeah. And they find my chest there a little bit because they didn't clean it up. Maybe I left a few stragglers on the floor. Of course. And I get called in for questioning. Yeah. Because my hair was found in the room. You're sitting here worried about uh, murder and you leaving a chest hair behind. Whether or not you shave your hair 
You're still leaving chest hairs overnight, yeah. guy. You probably lost three chest hairs during this conversation. Uh, probably. You're yeah. Right. You're right. But, I've done uh, this move. I don't I don't take the towel off location, but you ever do this move? You ever uh, dry yourself a little aggressively with a towel and there's a little something extra on the towel from your ass? So, and I've been afraid that that might be a problem with the maids. So I do a, I do a, a towel, towel drop in front of another room <clears throat> on my way out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, you've you, never done you, that move. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, what? You, you take the towel yeah. with the soil. On yes. It I'm, I'm talking, you know, not like, yeah, yes, but yes. Yeah, but, but then, and then yeah. you just casually drop it in front of another room. Yes, I try to find uh, hopefully a maid cart where they're working with an open door to a room, and then I do a drop in front of that door. So maybe she kind of thinks she just threw it out there halfway through cleaning. But if not, I'll just do a solid drop right in front of another door. So if so I come down the hallway, you're telling me if I look down, I'm going to see a towel with a shit stain and somebody else's uh and somebody you, else's well, you won't see the shit stain because I make it so you don't see it. But if the maid picked it up and said, why is 315, room 315, leave this out in front, they would think that the guy in that room wiped his ass with it and just opened the door and dropped it in front of his room. <laughs> I never heard of that. That's aggressive. <laughs> hey, man. Even when I throw garbage out from my hotel room, if I like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll dump it, like, especially um, Hank might notice. I don't know if Hank's a smoker, but when you smoke cigarettes back in the day, Maybe I have them in the in the Coca Cola can I was using or something. So I just I just dump my bag in front of another room on my way out, so it looks like they put it out in front. You know wow, what I'm saying? Man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You got you you leave the you leave the hotel room. The whole hallway is littered with garbage. <laughs> yeah, if, if you go by the way I leave the hallway, you think I'm the only one who's not an animal on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's up, bro? Are you ready for the Oscars? Ready for the Oscars? We uh, we just got word that uh, if the Irishman wins, I will be going up on stage. We got that confirmed this time. Uh, oh opposed my to last time. God! Now I have some serious rooting interest. Holy yeah. shit! So uh, holy shit! <clears throat> what is bro? What does that even work like? As far as like. Not that you would, but could could feasibly in this business, could a manager now call up businesses and say, my client is going to be on stage if they win for best Oscar. Do you have any interest in providing his watches or his jewelry or do you want to tan him or da 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 like like that? It's got to be wide open. Well, Armani is dressing me for the uh, for the event. So I'm getting Giorgio himself. Like, will he be taking your measurements? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I just actually got uh I got the suit today and Giorgio was nowhere in sight. But, but is it uh, custom made though for you or it's like not it? custom made, but it's tailor made. You know, it's not it's like they give me a tuxedo and they tailor right. it up. Wow, man. So uh it, that's like happening. It? Uh the, yeah, it's a stunning tuxedo. Oh my god. It's beautiful. I suppose you're not taking a Uber with a Muslim driver this time <laughs> either, are you? <laughs> We don't know. We haven't got that information yet. But uh, Lana is going to the viewing party. Uh, Lana is not invited to the Oscars. Again, just one ticket. But she'll be at the Netflix viewing party. And then we will meet up for the governor's ball. And then uh, Netflix is having a big party. We're also invited to the Elton John party. That, so th uh, This is also fascinating to me because just to put in perspective how big a ticket it is to get to the Oscars, you feasibly will be on stage as a member of a movie that won Best Picture, if, if it wins. And if you're watching at home, you just assume the spouse uh, is going to be, is there. You know what I mean? No, she is not there. She is in another locale Man. watching this all happen. Um, so, yeah, there is a full slate of parties this week. That Lana yeah. and I are going to anywhere from Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg's uh, uh, pre uh, pre Oscar party on Saturday night, um, going to the Polestar Awards on the tomorrow night, going to my agency's party on Friday night, and then to cap it all off, and I didn't even know if I told you this, oh. Saturday morning, mm -hmm. myself, Lana, my sister. And my mother-in-law and father-in-law are going on Celebrity Family Feud. <laughs> oh, 
my god. That is awesome, dude. <laughs> so we uh <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> oh man. Oh. oh bro, we gotta practice. I, my sister and I were practicing over the phone. It's hard, bro. Oh, now, when you're up there, are you just going to hit the bu buzzer whether you have the answer or not? Um, yeah. Now I'm, I'm chiming in right away, and uh, hopefully my brain will connect with my mouth to distribute some type of answer. All but right. I, well, just just because you have to know so fast, right? Just like right here. Say, uh, we surveyed 100 people as far as what is the number one dog to have as a pet. Survey says, boom, Sebastian. Dr. Spaniel. Boom. Cocker Spaniel. Can we see it? <laughs> Ding. Number nine. Play a pass. Play a pass. Play a pass. Play a pass. Well, 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 well let me ask you this. Is it well, good is to chime great. in early what? or wait for the other person to give the answer so you have time to marinate on what could be the number one answer? Uh, well, what do you mean? Oh, when, when you hit the buzzer? When they hit the buzzer, right? right Cocker right. Spaniel is probably not the number one answer. Right, now the right. person goes yeah. to them. Good point. And they have to better my answer. Yes. So don't you think it's better to just lay off until, I wonder what the percentage is. I know, but like on the flip side, then you get that one time where you lay off and the answer is mm. so obvious that you're like, ah, uh, you know, like number one place that people sleep and you hold back and they go, bed? You're like, fuck. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so I, I hold it off for. So the other thing that drives me nuts, though, is like, so you did Cocker Spaniel, right? You come in at nine. You got to get eight more dogs. Are uh, you playing or passing? If you really want to win, you're going to pass. There's no way those other people are going to get nine, eight dogs. Right? So all you got to do is get one for the steal. But you play because you don't really give a shit about winning. You want to play. Yeah, I want to play. play. I, I don't care. I could care less. I mean, listen, I think the, the, the prize money is like uh, five grand. I think it's five grand if you win. But that's it's all going to charity. It's not even the money. It's, it's, it's like even, I don't even care about winning yeah, for I just free. Want, I, I just, I just want to play. My my, I just want my, um, my wife because my wife's. She's not good at this stuff. Bro, you are not good at this stuff, what bro. Mean, Stop I'm deflecting. Good. I'm quick. You're not quick. You're so slow. Uh, it's it's an exciting game. And what makes it fun is everybody's excited and they're upbeat and they're trying to, and you're going to try and like, it's going to get to you. It's measuring you got and you're going to milk. <laughs> and, and, you know, and then I don't think you're as quick as you think you are. And By the way. Did you guys decide who's going to do if you do win and at the end you do the two things? Myself you have to because you're the Myself and my sister. Wow, man. Wow. I think Lana should do it personally because um, it would be better for the cast. <laughs> <laughs> that's, dude, that's going to be so much fun. And Steve Harvey's the host, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's great at yeah, that. So yeah. uh, we're doing that Saturday morning, bright and early. Oh, so, my. Uh, yeah, that, that should be fun. Um. But yeah, big week here in Los Angeles for us all. I uh, I got another thing here. I'm coming off another. <sighs> My wife hits me with yesterday. Um, I think I got rear-ended. You ever get this one? I think I got rear-ended. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, she wasn't in the car, I guess. No, no. She was in the car. What? I don't. She's, I'm sitting at a light, and I think I get rear-ended. I go, what do you mean you think you got rear-ended? She's like, I got out of the car, yeah, and the guy got out of the car, and he goes, I don't think I hit you. And my wife's like, well, I don't, I don't see any damage. So, like, why is the guy getting out of the car? Yeah, why are we all out of our cars? Why, yeah, why, why, why are we get? Why are we out? Yeah, oh, you got out because I got out. <laughs> <laughs> you got out because because you know you hit me. And I got out, so then you had to get out. She this goes, is this is how she's explaining the story to me. He said he thinks his mirror might have grazed the car. I go, mirror? Yeah, he said something about like his, his mirror might have grazed the car, but I didn't see anything. So we both got in our cars and left. So guy comes to clean the car today, and I go, did you see any? He goes, "Oh yeah, on the on the passing or on, on the driver's side rear bumper, 
and he shows me the photo. I saw this, and I go, ooh, wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> My wife said her and another guy were looking at the car, and they didn't see nothing. He goes, I don't know how you could. You can't miss this. He goes, I buffed it out, so now there's a couple scratches there. But yeah. I showed my wife, I go, you didn't see this? Showed her the photo today. You didn't see that? No, I didn't see that. He said he grazed me with his mirror. I go, graze you? What was he riding, a tricycle? <laughs> it's down by <laughs> your wheel. What the hell? is? Did she do uh, a walk around? I just don't understand how you think you get rear-ended. You both get out of the car. You look, you don't see nothing, but I see it right away. <laughs> like, Yeah. Well, I tell her defense. In LA, you get out, it's it's all very off-putting. She didn't see anything real quick. She's not going to worry about it. What, what, what I'm bu- bumping on here is, based on the size of this thing, the scuff mark. Would do you think you would have felt it if you were driving the vehicle? That's what concerns yeah. me. You don't. You're, you're not feeling impact. She said she thinks she got rear-ended. So she, I don't know if you're sitting there and you just imagine you got a bump. But like if you get hit, you do. All right, somebody just hit me. I just I don't understand it because it's yeah. happening to my wife on a consistent basis, whether it be. The, the the rims, she's scraping the rims. She's, uh, you know, yeah. my car uh, last time at, at 18. Eight, no, it was a, the Range Rover. Remember the Range Rover just got hit? She hit somebody. She rear-ended 18 grand, right? Now this is, why is it happening to you? <laughs> yeah. So of course I got this, this shit today. Oh, you, you think it was my fault that, I, that we got rear-ended? And in my head I'm thinking... Yeah. <laughs> Did you hit the brakes quick because you were texting? No. Nah. Uh, Where's your head on this? Uh, are you thinking that <laughs> if you were in the vehicle driving it in that exact moment, you wouldn't have got bumped? Yep. That's, yeah. So whether it's, I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying it's your <laughs> fault, Lana. I'm just saying wouldn't have happened if I was behind the wheel. <laughs> So however you want to interpret that is up to you. But that's, and I'm with you with that, man. I mean, you know, but I I believe people put themselves in in position sometimes Mm -hmm. to possibly get hit. Yeah. The way I drive, I feel I I eliminate possibilities of accidents because I'm thinking six, seven I'm, I'm looking. I'm with you. I'm Do knocking you wood. This? I'm the Larry Bird of driving. Right? Yeah, absolutely, guy. <laughs> You're planning seven moves ahead. You're looking. I'm looking at the crosswalk, the shot clock, right? <laughs> yeah. When it goes to the thing, 15, 14. I'm that far ahead of the game. <laughs> I'm right there with right? you. I see a dude biking 200 yards away. And I already know, all right, he's going to be coming up when I'm banging around. You got to watch out. Here comes this truck. She's sick. She's 17. Keep an eye on her to the right. Right? I'm with all of it. Right? And 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 like 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 Sully Sullivan landing in the river. Yeah. Just always cool as a cucumber. I could be in a full tailspin and I'll still sip my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> No panic, no, ah, 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 the women shattering windows, they're screaming so loud, scaring the shit out of us, right? Yeah, you're in a tailspin and you're <laughs> pissing into a Starbucks cup. <laughs> Bro, well, let's not forget you joined the club with that. We never even got into that. We never even got into this. I don't know how you do it, but let me let me take you back. I think this is Halloween, All right. This happened. Yeah. Going to my sister's house. We're on the freeway. God, I got to unload, right? All right. Refreshing for the new listeners on iHeart. If there are new ones aboard, told Sebastian a while ago about my technique in heavy traffic. I can pee in a cup while I'm driving doing even 60. And then you do it. You dump it out at a red light. Pretend it's half your cold coffee. Back to you. Okay. I didn't have a cup. So what I did is I took... An Essentia bottle. It's a bottle of water, right? And I'm on yeah. the freeway. Oh. Stop and go. 
Yeah. Right? Sometimes I'm at 45. Sometimes I dip to 21. So you, unless I don't want to get too graphic, but you're trying to do it. I've done this. It's a delicate dance. You're just trying to get the actual hole, the tip hole of your penis into the mouth of the cup. Yeah, you're not so even what, getting a full thing and dangling in. I usually no. dangle my Johnson halfway to down the cup, and no. then when you you feel wetness, you know you're halfway filled. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, it's like I a didn't know you were stick. using your, your <laughs> dick as a dipstick. <laughs> yeah, guy. When you're looking at the road, you you know you can't. You, you're sitting there going, "Am I filled oh, up? Am I close?" Do- then when it hits you the tip of your dick, you're like, "Oh, okay." It's like when you use a garden hose filling up a bucket. Yeah. Once you stop hearing the noise. You know the mouth of the hose reached at the water's level. So. Oh, no, bro. I didn't know you were pissing blind. Well, I'm driving. You're doing a blind piss. I'm dri- well, well, I don't know. What What do you do? You're, this is crazy what you're doing. This must so have ended I'm, in a nightmare. I got my family in the car, too, doing this. Wow, man, dude. I got I don't the kids in the I... back seat. I got Lana in the back seat. And I, I like you said, I got my my... my the tip of my head yeah, <laughs> shoved in the Essentia bottle. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I know. Yeah. The velocity on my piss is so fast. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would have to argue I could fill up a liter bottle within 12 seconds. It, it comes strong. It's, and fast. Hey, you you're filling the bottle up as fast as they fill up with water at the factory. <laughs> right? <laughs> Just boom, chop, boom, chop, boom, chop, right? <laughs> and is this one of those where you had to pee so bad you like fill up one whole bottle and and the pain hasn't even dissipated in the bladder? <laughs> right? <laughs> I fill up the bottle and I'm like, you got to be shitting me already. But I ain't doing the dipstick technique yeah. because the, the 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 room in the bottle is so like as soon as it gets to the tip, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's going to overflow. Absolutely. So I got to look down and glance and look down and glance. And I'm like, I used, I'm filling up bottles left and right. <laughs> so I got to let this thing go outside. And then I come back for more. It is a difficult task. It, it, and listen, it's not a walk in the park, but when you're done and you're, and you're 50 miles further down the road and a half hour further into your journey, you're so glad you didn't stop and waste your time. No, I, I agree, but I couldn't do it. I could not do it uh, because we started to pick up speed and you can't do that at 70 miles an hour. I'm sorry. In a bottle. Maybe no, in not a in cup. A- no. In a bottle, it's very difficult. So I literally had to hold the rest of it until we got. Because you know, once you start to piss, it's a psychological thing. You're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. coming out of me. Oh, yeah. But then when you gotta cut it, <sighs> it's yeah, it's it's like you don't want to be white trash and never have like an empty gallon milk container in the back seat of your car. That's yeah. total white trash. But man, if you had one. <sighs> Walk in the park, right? You wouldn't even have to slow down. <laughs> you know it, man. Just let it go. We surveyed 100 people. If you were going to the beach, what's the number one thing you bring to the beach? Survey Towel. set. Towel. Eh, it's not even up there, guy. Not even up there. What tall's not? No. Cooler frisbee. You know, uh, suntan uh, lotion. bro. Uh, DJ Hank, I, I I know you don't. Sp- <laughs> I think I think it would be one of those blankets slash towel, and we'll give it to you coming in at, at four. <laughs> no, yeah, towel. yeah, it's a towel. No, bring that's a, a towel. I'm just every once in a while I got to bring them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so what uh, what's uh, happening? Got, on got a under? got a new uh, workout technique. I wanted to get your opinion about. Yeah. So my uh, my retro fitness ran out here on Long Island. I belong to a gym back in Fredonia that I love hitting, but uh, I didn't want to. I got tired of going from the hotel to the gym. It takes away a lot of my morning time. Uh, so Kevin was talking about over here. He was talking about he was working out with some trainers, and he mentioned jumping rope. And I'm like, man, I got to jump rope in the room. I remember putting one in there. So for the past week and a half, every morning, I get up at the day's end. And I put on sweats and stuff like that. But instead of going to the gym, well, now I'm in East Norwich this week at the other hotel. But I go out into the hotel parking lot and I, I get in my oh, car God. 
and I park my car in the corner of the hotel, like farther away from everyone, one spot away. So there's only one spot between me and the curb so that my car becomes like my barrier. And then like right out of the 1970s guy, I put down the passenger side window. Uh, I put on, I put on uh, 102.3 WBAB. And I crank music from a Long Island radio station I love. And I do, uh, what I've been doing is 100 jumps and then, and then 20 fast as I can. And then I walk for uh, like, uh, you know, just 20 feet, uh, 20 yards. And then I come back and I do push ups. Then I do another 10, 100 jump ropes, 20 more. So it's 120 every time. And I do, I got to do 10 of them. And I take a pebble. And every time I finish one, I put the pebble down. Because sometimes I forget because I'm doing push-ups and I'm jumping around. And then I put another pebble, another pe- until I have 10 pebbles. And then I'm done, baby. And then I just take my jump rope and I draw, and I put my car back in its regular spot and I go in a shower. Now, okay. I, people see me. They come out and they smoke butts. And I don't know what they think of me. What would you think of I'll me? I'll tell you what they're thinking of you. What? I'll tell you what the whole audience is thinking of you. What, what, hey, if, if you peeked out your hotel room yeah. and looked at this... Mm-hmm. Right? Like if I got up and I'm like, oh man, I start the day, and then I look out in the parking lot and yeah. I see. I mean, I'm, so, I'm not right by the U shape where you pull up valet. I mean, I'm I know, like, but uh, if I looked in the parking lot yeah. and I saw some psychotic jump rope right, <laughs> in January, <laughs> mind you, right? It's balmy this winter though. It's a nice. It's winter. January. Yeah, it's some psychotic with sweatpants. <laughs> with his window pulled down, listening to the radio, <laughs> and he's throwing rocks down. Every once in a while, I go, oh, look at this. That guy's homeless. <laughs> <laughs> is that a, this is not a homeless workout. Oh, it, it's it's a great workout. I can't, the, the shoulders, the work is, it works the shoulders, the push ups. And when I do the push ups, I'm doing tri push ups and regular push ups. And when I come up, my hands, the bottom of my oh, hands, yep. got all the holes from the pebbles from the cement. Yeah. So I got to shake them out. Bro, I fucking feel like Rocky, man. That's what I'm saying. It's like the only thing you're missing is Cuff and Link. (laughs) (laughs) You just have two turtles up on the dash. (laughs) (laughs) And this is Rocky (laughs) Knight. Holy shit. Well, I tell you, man, I'm 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 digging it. And now I I added to it because I went home last week and I got my wife had one of those, Jackie had one of those stretch cords. So I bring that, and after well, last week, my room at the Days Inn, this, I don't usually get this, but this was just perfect, man. Ground level my room was, um, so I was able to park my Roo. You know when you're staying at a motel and you can park your car right in front of your motel oh, door? Oh, yeah, it's, that's why trash has So <laughs> Oh, it is. So I would come out, jump ropes, then go into the hotel room and do the push-ups on the floor with a <sighs> towel, then take my stretch cord and i step on it and i'm doing curls bro with no shirt on in the mirror with the chains dangling <laughs> the arms are ripping then i put the shirt on just to go out and jump rope oh then wow. i come back in take the shirt off for the push-up sit-up cord <laughs> oh my god dude it's a prison motherfucking workout <laughs> it's oh. dude you could keep your music, man. Working out with no shirt on is like oh. ten AC do DC tunes in a row. <laughs> oh, it's one, it is. It's probably one of the best feelings ever to look in the mirror shirtless oh. while you're doing curls and going, "Oh, this is what they could look like." I know, dude. I want to work out one day, buck naked with a tan. For just sneakers, just to fucking see the. It's a little gay, a little bouncy. I'll admit that's that, a, but maybe I can. <laughs> but just to just to see, like I know God would be looking down, going, "That's what I made, baby." <laughs> hey, you remind me of Lou sometimes when you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, so that's man. the prison workout. I had another quick question before I ask you. Oh, dude, a friend of mine sent me a text of a picture of your home, an aerial view. And he doing this one? I'm, I'm a little feel like 
Bro, <laughs> you're famous. You're going on Family Feud. People talk about you. I know, but like, what, what, what's this guy got nothing to do with it? Is he getting aerial shots at home? Nothing to do. That's, that's what we do. We look at tabloids of famous people. <laughs> that's what we do. You probably looked at that house when it was Gwen Stefani's. <laughs> Actually, I know you did. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So he, but he's commenting on how gorgeous it is and da da da, right? But it got me to thinking, right? With the whole drone situation, and we have one here, Kevin, at the show. The, the crew is the name of the show, by the way, coming out on Netflix. Don't get anybody ideas. No, no, I'm not. I, I'm not. I, no, and they're driving this, they, this, they've got this drone. And it's going all around the building like it's coming into my office and, and they can they were on a camera. So they're looking at me. Right. Are you legally not you, but anybody, if I'm in my home in Fredonia and a drone is in my backyard, yeah. am I legally allowed to like whip a basketball at it and knock that shit out of the sky and well, then throw a, it out? An, that's an interesting question. Do you own the airspace above your home? Yeah. I don't is know. That your, is that your property? If you come within a 35 foot. Uh, feet of your rooftop are you legally okay to like knock that out of the sky yeah i mean you know if the guy's like hang gliding over my house i wouldn't do anything <laughs> but this is clearly <laughs> you're, you're, you're spying on me man right oh. just knock that shit out and now it's mine right? i think you would i mean i listen a drone comes in your backyard you can't you can't take it out I, I a don't drone know. comes up to your window with yeah. a camera. Uh -huh. You're not allowed to take that. Take I think I think you should be allowed to. I mean, I, I, the backyard to me is an extension of the house. I've done some things in my backyard that I, I don't need people to be seeing. No, I, I agree. Mean, I agree. I think you should be able to take it out. No, no problem. And then keep it. Yeah, absolutely. Man. It's mine now. <laughs> absolutely, man. <laughs> Uh, uh, all right. So before we go, because I know I see, I see, uh, I, I see, I saw what you just did. Yeah. No, I, I uh, believe uh, me, I haven't gotten any sleep last last night. I was in Denver. Yeah. Doing no. a corporate gig. It's crazy. I know. He's scheduled. And, so. and then uh, zero degrees. I, I come home at one o'clock and uh, I got up at what today? 530. It's just, there's no sleep, bro. I can't, I can't get any rest. Well, I think I think after this awards is yeah, all it's, done, it's going to calm down. It's I think you'll down. be able to finally you, you, listen, man. You just moved into the house. You got all yeah, these awards. You're doing these insane tour with all these crazy shows. I'm uh, a man. What do you got? What was that? Uh, last? You looked at your sheet. What do you got on that sheet? Uh, a couple of things I wanted to bring up yeah. before we go. First of all. Uh, yeah, listen, as far as Christmas gifts go, if we people keep asking what yeah, to talk I think about that, it. That, that ship sailed. It's kind of sailed. That's <laughs> it. I'm, I'm right there with you, man. Which is convenient for you guys because I crushed it this year. Dude, my daughter loved that horse. That was sick. That was really cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, the horse is, uh, Seraphine's really loving the horse, too. We got one for her. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's something. To... And that swing that we got you for the kids, that round swing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the tree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so Jackie's like, because uh, uh, that swing we have, it's the coolest thing, dude. Your kids are going to love it. It's so cool. And she's like, do they even have a tree, though? I mean, it seems like, you know, they got to be. And I go, listen, you know, <laughs> they, they can put a pole up. I'm not. I'm not not getting the swing because I don't know if they have a tree. That's <laughs> that's not my problem. So if you don't have a tree, man, you know we have a tree. It's in the it. front yard. We gotta right. figure out how to put that thing on. And uh, did you see Watt's monologue before we go here? Oh yeah. Um, so let's get into the Watt thing. Uh, SNL. I did not see the show. It's from front to back. I saw it online. Clips. Uh, I did see the monologue. I thought it was fantastic. I thought the best skit he had uh, was the one where he's in the sound room and he's doing, he's reading the... I didn't see the clips. I didn't see any oh, sketches. Didn't? I only saw the monologue. Oh, you didn't see the sketches? No, I had to go do a show uh -huh. and I, I was in the green room. As a... it's, been, it's been five days, guy. What are you, what are you doing over there? You're looking at the aerial shots of my house, but you can't take a look at the Watson. I wasn't looking at the aerial shots that were sent to me. And and, and the monologue to me, I, I he it was clearly in good hands. And uh, I just, I am not a sketch guy, bro. 
no, I mean, comedians that typically aren't sketch guys, but I'm just, I was looking at it from. I got to check him out. I didn't know he was in. Um, I, I didn't know. He was in. didn't know he was in. This is the host of the show. I know. I got to go see him. I got to watch these. Hank, okay. send them to me, man. <laughs> so, which talk to me? Which one was the best? I, I well, I mean, you got to monologue look at it. was awesome, by the way. Yeah, he, he, listen, I think this is going to open up a lot of doors for this guy. It would oh, be yeah. like you or myself going in to play defensive line on a Sunday and coming away with four sacks. Eh, not going to wow. happen. Yeah, no. But he looked comfortable. Uh, there was a sketch he did where, uh, you know, him and his wife were having sex and the kid walked in and the, and the, you know, this is the aftermath of it. So he's explaining to his kid how he was having <laughs> sex. Hilarious. With his wife. Yeah. Holy shit. I gotta see this. <laughs> so that's a I little think, racy, a little is. dicey. I think, yeah. I think he did some stuff that was, uh, that was pushing some boundaries for him, you know, as a wholesome guy. And uh, it just I thought he he looked like a natural and, and it was really well, well done. So uh, the monologue, to- it was unbelievable. I mean, I even texted him saying, I, I got to be honest with you. I thought you were going to be a deer in the headlights. I'm not going to lie to you. No, no. He, he came out there and attacked it like a defensive end on Super Bowl Sunday. So. I thought it was uh, really well done. I think there's a lot more opportunity for him in the entertainment uh, world after he gets done with. Uh, well, after oh, yeah. he gets done with football, is uh, you know, probably going to do movies and then go on to be president of the United <laughs> States. Uh, it's looking more and more like literally, it's going that way. Yeah, I mean, so, truly, I don't even know. I don't even know if he can do movies because uh, it might taint the run for the presidency when the time comes. I mean, yeah. I think we go. I think we go right into the to the Senate, right in in, in uh, the Wisconsin Senator, just to dip our toes for two years, and that's it, baby. White House, boom. We'll be so there, bro, by twenty thirty two. We'll be playing bocce ball in the fucking White House. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, as yeah. you remember, how old one has to be to be president of the United States? What's the age requirement? Fifty five. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Five. 35. Actually, how dumb my that boot, boot nig is running. He would obviously know it's got to be at least 38. Right? Isn't he 38? I think it's 35 from what I remember. I, I mean, it can't be. 35 years old. Wow. Can you imagine man. a 35-year-old president? <sighs> is it 35. Yeah, 35. There you go. Thank you. Remembered something from school. So 35 years old. God, I had something else on the slate here that happened to me this week. Here it is. Let me get your thought on this. I can't believe you're going on Family Feud. Fucking crazy. (laughs) Okay, what's up? I'm on an airplane. And, uh, the pilot came back to say hello, right? Holy Listen, shit. I'm only telling you this because what's the, what's the follow? Big fan. Thank you. It is comedy. Yeah, thank you so much. I get up to get something out of the overhead, and I look out of the corner of my eye, and someone's taking a photo of me in the seat directly behind me, but at the window, right? Right. I'm in the aisle. So I said, okay. So I sit down. It's a short flight. It's an hour. Get off the plane. I get a tap on his shoulder. This guy holds up his phone and written on his phone, I'm reading it. I thought he was, I thought he couldn't talk. I thought he was like deaf. (laughs) And I'm reading it and it said, the person behind you for the flight was taking photos of your computer screen. So I look at the guy and I take my head, I had my headphones off. I go, he goes, I was going to tell you and I was going to send you this mid flight, but I didn't know what to do. I just, if you have any passwords, maybe you should change them. What you think on that? You look stunned. <sighs> I can't believe that story, dude. I can't. I don't. I'm a little confused with the guy 
who showed you his phone that said that he was showing you that because if he said it out loud, the guy would have heard him. I was it. no, I was going to baggage claim. This is after the flight. He chased me down after the flight. So why wouldn't he just say to you? I don't know. I thought that's what I said. I, well, because I, I had headphones on. He thought maybe I was on a phone call, and he put this phone in front of my yeah. face, and I'm reading it, and I take my headphone. I go, what? He goes, oh, yeah, I was going to tell you in the mid-flight, but she, I don't know. She was drinking, and four, she had four bourbons. Oh, this guy sounds like he might be a wacko. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I mean, what do you and I was looking at Amazon. The hell am I? We, 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 there's yeah, nothing, the, there was nothing there that would be, you know, like that she could. What were you lift, looking at? What but, were you like shopping for clothes or something? I mean, yeah, anything can matter here. Like he was looking at air purifiers. Air purifiers. Hmm. Trying to get the angle. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, so, I don't know, man. It's like, what you can't do? You can't do nothing anymore. You can't put the. You can't open up your computer now. If we were at Sirius XM, Lou right now would be playing Fame by David Bowie. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's crazy, dude. Crazy. Uh, I tell you, you man, if Lou, somebody took a well, photo of my computer and said, they said, I think, you know, he's got your password. <laughs> Can you give him to me? Because I fucking can't remember. I got on the phone <laughs> with Jackie the other day because uh, she wanted my Orbitz password thing. And I'm in the writer's room. So I texted to her. And, uh, of course, she texts us back, of fucking course, that's not it, Pete. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's what it says in my notebook. And she's like, well, what? Because, like, I, I don't know my password, so I'll do forget password. We'll email you a new password. And then yeah. they email me the new password. Instead of writing down the password, I just, that's what I do every time yeah. I need the password. That's what I do, too. And I don't that's, write them down. That's insane. That's insane. That's so lazy. And then I, the other day I tried to change uh, last week. I changed like all of them, as many as I could to the same thing. I almost told you I changed it to. I was just about to say my password. <laughs> and Jackie's like, that's so dumb. If they figure that out, they got all your stuff. What? What? Whatever. What? Whatever. Right. I mean, by the way, if I went in my bank account ever and all my money was gone, uh, that fucking bank if they think they ain't going to reimburse me for every dime, right? Are you, oh, no, somebody hacked you? No, they hacked you. They hacked you through me. <laughs> I, I don't even get that shit, guy. Do you even get that shit? Well, that's like losing your keys, somebody picking them up and then opening up your house. Is that your fault? No, I, I'm saying. Yeah, uh, yeah that's that, your fault. No, well, Same thing. You, no, get the key, a- you, get keys, you gave the keys to the safe. No, no, no. I, I, I'm saying I, I, I go to the bank and I take out my money or whatever, yeah. and they go somewhere along the line. Somebody videotaped you putting yeah. in your code or something, da, 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 da. And yeah. I'm like, well, I go, shwoo, it's a good thing I had. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Ah, it's a good yeah. thing I had it in a bank then, huh? Like, no shit. That's why I have it with you. So that you if someone does hack you it, were you were compromised. Uh, you fucked up. So, so what, what are we getting out of the bank? What, like, by the way, I just took my money at it. I'll say it. I'll say it. Chase, right? Yeah. I went to one of those banks that's that's not brick and mortar, yeah. where 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 there's you know it's just online banking. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh yeah, yeah. Your money's gone. No, my money's gone. My money is just going through the roof because I don't have ninety people saying good morning to me and offering me coffee and lollipops and shit, uh, coming through the lobby. That's what listen. you're paying for, it, Chase. You're paying yeah. for. Hey, actually, listen. I shouldn't say any of that. People need work. That's a no, all, no, no, no. Listen, 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 I'm all about I'm all about jobs, baby. Listen to me. Shit hits the fan. You yeah. go down to the bank and go, give me my money in cash. Right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I go to the vault. Here's your cash. Now, yeah. you're what? In a virtual bank? Right? What are you saying? What am I saying? Yeah. How are you getting cash from these people that you're banking with now? Oh, oh, I keep a little in Chase. Just, and then I do transfer, you know, to fill up that side one here and there. Okay. Oh, you're, you're, oh, oh, you're talking about like an apocalypse. I won't be able to get Yeah, I want a hundred grand now, cash. The credit's not working, the credit cards. I need, to, I need hundred grand in cash. Yeah, I listen, man. If I need a hundred grand in cash, I got, I got, I got a bigger set of problems. Don't you think, man? <laughs> I mean, 
By the way, you bring up an interesting question. Sometimes I see this uh, old time a Bill Devane hawking gold on TV. And, I, I, and is there anything to that? Like, is there going to be some apocalypse? There's going to be some schmuck with 10 pounds of gold and I'm going to be going, fuck. I mean, <laughs> right? It just sounds it too hard <laughs> what, like, to do it. To just get it. Like, <laughs> I'm going to call them. Look, they're going to ship me a bar of gold. Where am I going to put that at? <laughs> Bro, I'm not kidding you, man. Last week, I was cleaning out the change dish in my rental car, and I had 48 pennies. I fucking threw them out. They were too heavy. They were weighing down my pocket. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I hear you with the gold. I'm going to come back here with a bar of gold and get a car. Yeah, like if, if shit goes down and somebody comes up to you and goes, yeah. hey, man, I'll buy your house. And you're like, all right, but here's a bar of gold. You go, get the fuck out of here with that. No one's going to take that as a but, currency. But, but what if they said, what if they said, if you said hypothetically you're selling your house for 200K, hypothetically, right? And they go, I'm going to give you a bar of gold worth 270K. And Where? even. That they have, they own. They yeah, have. I know, but like, where is it worth two hundred seventy k? Well, I mean, you no, you have a gold guy come in and he goes, he weighs it and he goes, no, nah, that's pure gold and it's the value of that gold melted down is two hundred seventy k. Are you are you gonna go? I'd rather wait for someone with two hundred American dollars. Yeah, uh, and just, uh, instead uh, of taking your gold in my in a rental oh, yeah. sil Silverado to the fucking <laughs> Molda Melda. <laughs> What am I going to take the gold and now I got to go melt it somewhere? Where do you melt gold? <laughs> I was trying to be smart. I think it's called melding, schmelding, or something like smolding, something like that. Can we get a Google that, Hank? Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. But for the action, see, that's the difference between me and you. I would do that. You go, you going with the bar of gold. Yeah, yeah, fuck that. I ain't want no bar of gold, man. I don't even know where to get, get that uh, exchanged. I'm getting, uh, I know we're wrapping up here, but I just want to say I'm getting very comfortable seeing you now, bro. Oh, yeah, we're slipping right in, bro. It's just like, I can't even, I couldn't go back to not seeing you. <laughs> and your professionalism with my technical difficulties, I, I applaud you for that. Oh, I learned that from you. Hey, dude, I can't. <laughs> I'm rooting so hard to see that Armani suit on stage Sunday, oh, baby. Oh, man, so am I, man. It'd be so uh, nice just to get up there. I'm going to, now, you where should I stand if, I mean, we've talked about this before. Yeah. The cast is going up there. Scorsese, De Niro, Pesci, Keitel, Ray Romano. Where do I flank off is, his right shoulder? Is Bobby Cavanaugh going to, you think? I don't know if he's going to be there. But it's it's going to be a lot of people on stage. I Yeah, I would, uh, I would listen, man. It's, I, I don't know. I would stay near Ray, I guess. I, I, well, well, I don't even know anymore. Pilots are putting it in autopilot to come back <laughs> and, and say they're fans. <laughs> it's like crazy. I, people are droning over your backyard. <laughs> ah, who knows, man? They may prop you right up in front. I mean, Marty may, as you're walking up, Marty may go, grab the fucking thing. Won't you grab the statue? I want it all. <laughs> That's awesome. And obviously, whether or not you win, it's just an amazing, fun thing, dude. The whole, well, the whole thing. Let me ask you. I don't even know this rule. Yeah. If it wins best picture. Yeah. How many Oscars do they give out for that one? <sighs> That's a probably a great question. I would. I say the director and the producer get one. Do you get? Do you uh, get? Um. Uh, um. A moment with it, like can you, you know, your wife and you get to hold it and take a photo with it? Oh, I'm listen. If I'm, I'm gonna definitely get a photo with that damn thing. Yeah, uh, but I wonder uh, anyone on the poster. Probably anyone on the poster. Oh, wait, the Green Book one. Yeah, and they they gave three or four. Oh yeah, the movie I was in last year won Best Picture. I forgot. <laughs> Well, I was falling downstairs at the time. Hey, so listen. I don't know how many they gave out. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, even bigger than all that is we, I think we peaked at what, 111 last week. This thing is, we're going top 10 this year. We're going top 10. I, I will. 95, bro. 95? We broke the 100. We're, Dude. We're consistently in the top 200 and lower half of it, uh, or I'm uh, sorry, upper half of it. Uh, last four weeks wow all right i mean it's it's a juggernaut 
I mean, people are bitching and complaining. Where's Lou? How the hell could you let Lou go? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which, you know, it's it was a hard, hard departure to make. And we talked a little about it. He was, yeah. you know, he was heartbroken. I haven't talked to him since. Fuck it. But. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we're not this mean, so. Yeah. We loved Listen, Lou. He was yeah, great. We love Lou. And we got this guy, Hank, you know, which, you know, speak. And he's, I don't know, he's a mute. You don't, you don't say nothing. But no. Yeah, and we understand Lou's value to the show, but mind you, we can't play any music on iHeart like we used to. I know. Yeah. Do you yeah. know if we can like, like uh, I know a guy who's beautiful, voice of an angel. He does weddings, and he can cover anything. Um, are we allowed to like have him? If you want to hear Prince, his, yeah. his name is Jimmy. He just can't take the intellectual property of the person and put it on the show and then uh, and then make money on it. Um, mm. Mm. Boy, but, you sounds uh, very Jewish there. I know. I came out of nowhere. I was actually the intellectual property. You ever you ever say something? Go where the hell did I pick that out of my brain? <laughs> yeah, man, it was like Travolta phenomenon or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear you though. Oh, All right, listen, I know we're rolling. Let me plug it up. Uh oh, actually, this comes out tomorrow. So Friday, Saturday night, baby, I'll be at Governor's. Uh got one coming up at uh Bananas, Hasbrook Heights, and then I'll be in Boston coming up. Uh PCorielli.com to see the dates. Don't forget this Sunday night, tune into the Oscars. Sebastian Maniscalco is one of the cast members. Very big. F- I mean, not a, a, a very, my favorite scene in the whole movie is about an eight minute chunk with Sebastian, the Irishman up for best picture. So watch that. What are you plugging, baby? Where are you going, my man? What do I got? SebastianLive.com for all tour dates. I got uh, some major announcements coming up here in a couple of months uh, in regards to the tour. Um, also, just a lot of things percolating. So uh, nothing really to report here. I'll be at the uh, for Valentine's Day weekend at the Bethlehem, Pennsylvania Winds Creek Casino. So you can check me out there. And then uh yeah, we're off and running. More more stories to come. Thank you for listening to the Pete and Sebastian show. We will see you here next week. Please share our show with your friends and family. Do appreciate the listenership. And we will see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> 